Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to episode 45, 45 of um, Codebase Alpha. And uh, today we're continuing to work on our audio plugins uh, using uh, C++, uh, a language which is new to me, uh, using Juice, a framework which is new to me, and doing signal processing, digital signal processing, a subject which is new to me. So um, you're watching me kind of stumble through and learn as, as we go along, um, and hopefully kind of gives you the idea that um, you can tackle something which is um, completely new um, and use the skills you've got to try and transfer uh, that knowledge across to um, what you're doing uh, in, with the new framework and the new language. I'll just move my phone out of the way there. Okay, so um, last stream ended rather abruptly as it was kind of something like half past midnight. I was very tired and, and we had a um, we had an out of bounds error with uh, our delay plugin. And um, I was a bit confused by the fact that the um, sample rate, although it started off at um, 44,100, which is what I expected, it quickly changed to 48,000 um, during the running of the program. And I think that kind of distracted me really from looking at what the actual issue was with running out, uh, you know, over over in the bands of our circular buffers, uh, which was a really simple problem in the end. So let's go over to the code and just I'll just show you that. Um, so. Hopefully my update of Visual Studio is finished. Yeah, so uh, that's the bot running. So let's go over to our plugin code. So remember, this code is um, partially generated by the Juice framework, and then we, we've dived in and started to actually change the code. And what we're aiming for is a delay effect, so that um, we get kind of an echo, repeating echo effect on the audio. And um, the problem we had last time was that when I when I ran the the, the plugin in the plugin testing host then it after about a fraction of a second it, it crashed out with um uh, out of bounds error and the reason for that was simply it was that in this line 997 i had uh, greater than instead of greater than and equals to um, and it's such a simple problem off by one problem one of those things that you know everyone comes comes across and falls foul of uh, but i was kind of distracted by the change of the values from what I expected with the, with the sample rate changing so the size of the buffers wasn't what I expected and kind of got distracted from actually trying to track down the actual problem um, so I corrected that that's one change and then the other change I corrected was what well, was the change I made was to remove the debug statement so I'll, I'll maybe I'll show you later what a debug statement does to your audio when you've got that in there it that wrecks the audio um, so this is why we, 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 we this is real time digital audio processing so um, we need to be kind of um, we need to be as quick as possible in doing all our manipulations so that's the change so all that has been pushed up onto um, onto github it's in the develop branch of github and and what I'll do now is just um demonstrate uh, what we've what the effect that we've got so let's let's make sure we compile let's build first because we need to rebuild every time before we run the um the the test suite i say test suite the test plugin uh, host and uh, once we've compiled then we can run it up and we can actually see what happens so let's get some in the music meantime let's get some um no i won't run the music just yet because we're going to need we're going to play the music as part of our test uh, so let's let's start the debugger and here we are with our host um, so we've got our delay um, plugin sitting here and this is the audio output so we wire up uh, those two and we're going to want an audio source so let's initially let's have an audio player uh, wire that up such and if I double click on here I can get uh, a file to play and I'll play one of the um, one of the music files I play on stream. So this is uh, Relax Day, this light, Lightness Within, which is one of the royalty-free uh, tracks that um, anyone can download and, and use on their stream. And I really like Relax Daily. I've got the full kind of set, four seasons worth, well over well over 100 tracks, varying between five minutes and about nine to ten minutes in length. So, you know, hours and hours and hours of, of music um, that I can write code to. Um, I also have the music to code by stuff, which is I think it's like 18 or 19 tracks of four, 25 minutes each. So we've got I've got hours and hours of of code code music, which is uh, really good. So let's um, let's load that in, um, and let's bring up our plugin. So currently we just have the three controls. We have our wet dry ratio current set to 50/50. We have our feedback 
uh, in uh, decibels and we have our uh, delay so let's just bring up actually what I'll do is I'll bring up um, the diagram the block diagram of our um, plugin so I smartened it up uh, so this is the block diagram get rid of this okay so um, just to explain this before we start what we have is we have a dry signal which is an unaffected signal this is the the pure audio that's coming through here called dry we're taking some of that off and passing it through our delay filter which is here that's our, our circular buff that we were at last time and feeding that back out we're also taking some of that back and feeding it back into this summation um, feature here so that we get this feedback and how we got it set up is that um, a is 1 minus B so we have like a, these are kind of balanced as, as I increase a, a B decreases in proportion and C is just a control um, I think it's up to 20 decimals in its, in, in its maximum so this is um, these multiply these 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 uh, signals going through and obviously the more, more feedback you have the, the kind of deeper the effect that we're going to get um, and same with the wet dry obviously the more wet signal we put through the more echo we're going to get in so that's kind of the the diagram I'll leave uh, yeah, I'll leave that down the bottom so here's the um, this is the wet dry ratio which is uh, as I say is um, um, A and B on that diagram the feedback was C in decibels currently set to zero um, and it's zero up to 20 I believe it is is it no uh, on to 0.98 okay so if we go if we go above um, Actually, it's not in decibels in that case, is it? Feedback isn't in decibels if it's that range. That's just a zero to one range, so I need to correct that. And here's our delay in seconds, so half a second delay currently. Let's play, um, let's reduce um, the delay to zero and we'll have 100% um, dry signal. So if I play this now, so you can hear this is just the unadulterated audio, so there's no delay effect going on so if I now I if we say let's introduce some delay let's introduce half a second of delay still don't hear any change but as I start to bring in the um, the wet signal you'll start to hear the echo you can hear the echo now as I increase more and more of the wet there's more echo I hope everyone can actually hear that Hi uh, Cody Beard, welcome to the stream, good to see you Wingsy Rose, you're finally learning C Sharp, well done Great. Good, good to hear, so that's it, you're learning C Sharp and I'm learning C++ so we're both on a learning journey so if I bring the wet, no, wet dry down to about 50% again and start to increase the feedback so we get even more of that stronger air delay kind of feature let's stop that and let's so we still get there's the delay there's the echo <laughs> if we um if we remove this now uh, I remove pins delete this filter and I bring in uh, have I just stopped it no I think I don't think I have oh I think I've just crashed it okay let's continue hello thank you for the follow welcome to the stream not seen you before so hello and lots and lots of underscores welcome good to see you so I'm glad you can join us on this uh, this slightly later um, Codebase Alpha stream normally on, on a Wednesday I'll be starting at four o'clock but because I'm actually on holiday at the moment, then we're starting a bit later, um, and the whole schedule is going to be a bit up in the air. But when I stream, it could be it could change around, and extra streams streams going missing, whatever. So um, do bear with me on that. So let's bring in a sine wave generator and link that up. Okay, and if we bring up our um, our delay again, so let's see if we can play a sine wave through that. Um, let's have a look. I don't seem to be hearing anything there. Go on, sign since. I seem to be working. 
oh we need to put the MIDI input into it so we get some MIDI control here we are. so I can use my MIDI keyboard which I've got here um, to play a few notes so so we need that a bit louder don't we um, So you should be able to hear that echo now quite nicely. So if I whack these these feature, features right up, one second delay. And the, the feedback is controlling the strength of the echoes. So that lasts longer. I don't know if you can hear that. It's a bit quiet, I think. Okay. So that basically shows that our delay is actually working. So let's stop our our um, plugin from running. Okay. Um, so, oh, I need, oh, I need to demonstrate something actually. So we'll, we'll this is the diagram again, and um, the wet the wet and dry ratio basically is, is is controlling how how much echo we get, and the feedback is controlling um, really the kind of strength of the echoes and how many echoes we get. Uh, and then we've got our circular buffer here. So. Um, these kind of these parameters uh, d uh, a b c and d um, i'll explain uh, as we go along okay let's just run that up again um i will bring back my um audio player while it's up i just wanted to show you um a problem that we've got with the player as it stands at the moment so let's load up uh, a file we'll have lightness within again and play it. So this is the delay. If I start moving the delay, now you, I don't know if you're going to pick up on this, but hopefully you will. So listen carefully. So as I waggle that, you should be able to hear clicks. Now stop. I'm going to move it really slowly. There aren't any clicks. If I if I was adjusting this live for a musician, you get those clicks, it would be pretty um, pretty disastrous, really. So um, those clicks are caused by the fact that the um, the delay is changing so rapidly um, that um, that basically we get discontinuities discontinuities in the signal, so that the the digital signals kind of jump, and that's what the click is. It's a big it's a big discontinuity. Um, in the rather than having the, the smooth uh, waves coming through the, the sinusoidal type waves um, coming through, then we get sudden big jumps in the um, in the waveform. Uh, and where that's that's fine if you're playing something like a square wave or a sine wave. When you're actually playing music and you're creating those big jumps, you get those clicks and pops and things. Uh, and so we need to kind of fix that. Um, and the best way to fix it is to actually not not move not when you change the delays to not move so quickly and we need to kind of smooth it out and go slower so kind of head to when, when someone moves the delay from um, 0.1 second to 0.5 seconds is to get there in steps and not get there um, gradually yeah it didn't sound good did it Minxie Rose so um, those clicks were um, was pretty annoying um, so we need to we need to use some kind of mathematical method to smooth that out and luckily it's really really simple so let's say bring up paint and i do intend to get myself a graphics tablet so that we can actually do this a bit nicer let's uh fill the screen with some gray uh, because all that white is very depressing um, and then let's go to a pencil and you can see me write really badly okay so um if we are trying to hit a target value, which we'll call uh, VT, that's our target. Um, and where we currently are, uh, we'll call X. This is the current value of the delay, and we're trying to get to a target value of, of v, v sub T. Then we actually can go in steps. And so if we, if we actually subtract from our value, um, some kind of scaling factor, which we'll call Z, um, multiplied by X minus the value we're trying to get to, um, then this is going to be as as we as we move through our our um, processing loop, 
over time we're going to get closer and closer to our, our x is going to get closer and closer to vt until it equals vt in which case this equals zero and we stop okay Thanks, you you want to notice that you've got new headphones so um, well i hope it i hope that um that the that the kind of annoying clicks were actually um um audible to everybody if they weren't um Minxy was can attest there was horrible clicks and whistles and and bangs and pops and all kinds of things going on when I when I kind of waggled that um, that delay slider around. So we don't want that. Okay, so this is the formula we're going to use, and we need to choose a value for this. Now remember that we're going through something like um, every every second we're processing forty four thousand one hundred uh, samples approximately. That is if we're using CD quality um, audio source. Uh, which we are. I won't do it again. Well, I will do it again, but hopefully our smoothing function will, will actually sort the problem out. So we're going to choose a nice small value of this. We're going to choose 0 0.00. I don't know. We'll try 1 to begin with. So it's going to go very slowly. It's going to go in kind of steps of one of a thousandth towards our target value. So that's the kind of idea that we want to get to. Um, so hopefully that'll be as much maths we might as it might be a little bit more maths actually to to do but that should be um, the most of it um unfortunately when you're working with digital signal processing there is maths involved so um, i'm trying to kind of protect uh, most people from um, the details uh, as i'm learning them myself but um there, there'll be some time when we, we can't avoid it and uh, this this is a fairly simple little um expression which we can use Okay, so Z we're going to set to a small number like this. Uh, X, remember, is out the value we're smoothing, the current value of, this, of, the, of, uh, of V, and V is um, is our v, v sub T is our target. So, for example, if our target was uh, 0 0.5, and at the moment our value was um, 0 0.4, then if we go through this, then uh, the first time we go through this loop, this is going to be equal to 0 0.4 uh, uh, and you can see as we iterate through our loop it's going to kind of gradually move it's going to slide its way slowly we may have to make this bit bigger but it's going to slide towards its target um, delay value of 0 0.5 so let's have a look what we're going to be able to do with that then so this is the delay that which that we want to change so the delay um, is here Okay, so that sets the delay. Uh, okay, so um, let's we need a new a new um, a new value. So delay in samples. Um, okay. Um, so we need a, uh, a float of um, smoothed delay. Uh, so we'll pop that over there as a, uh, a private member variable of our, um, our processor class. Okay, um, so. What we want to do is approach our um, our our, um, our value um, while we're in this loop, looping through all those samples. So this delay in sample needs to be the smooth version. So let's go and initialize some values first. Let's go to our constructor initializer. And set the uh, smoothed delay to a value of zero to start with, um, and then over here in our prepare to play, we're going to set our um, smoothed delay is going to be equal to our. delay from the control so initially we at the at the right value uh, 
Okay. And so then we want to um, we want to say the delay in samples is going to be equal to um, the um, the smooth sample, smooth delay, and we're going to want to approach that value over time. So we'll move that down into here. So that's going to be the delay in samples there. Uh, and um, so it's going to be the, the smooth value of the delay multiplied by the um, sample rate. Will be how many samples we're going to delay. So let's think about it now. Now um, the smooth delay, using that formula we just wrote there, is going to be equal to the smooth delay minus this factor. So. That's going to be uh, smooth delay minus equal, um, and then we've got a factor z, which we're going to set to 0 0.01 initially, and we're going to multiply that by the smooth delay minus the value of our um, our new uh, our new delay. And the new delay was equal to this. Let's grab that and we'll pop it in there. Let's move the delay. Okay, so each time we go through the um, through this for loop, if our smooth delay is not the same as our target delay, it's going to gradually get there in steps of one thousandth. Okay, so Mixy Rose warning, I'm going to try that again now. So let's um let's rebuild. So um prepare prepare to um take your earphones off if it's going to be a problem. But I'm hoping that we've now smoothed our parameter so it changes only slowly. We may need to increase that uh, one thousandth factor, uh, but we'll see. So here's our delay. Bring that in. Now we want our, our uh, audio player. Connect that up. Okay, open up lightness within again. And we'll open up our plugin. And we'll start playing. So you can hear that echo going on nicely. Now I'm going to jangle this um, this control here and we'll see what happens. We don't get those clicks anymore. We get kind of a a whining sound, which is probably what we would expect to get. So I wonder if we should. If that's probably exactly what we're after. But let's um, let's just try increasing that number. Let's put it up to I don't know. 005 and see if we get anything different. We, sh we could, should expect that kind of whirring, whirring, whining sound, but not the clicks. The clicks are really bad because there's a sharp discontinuities and, um, and it will drive, um, drive you mad if you listen to that. I'm not suggesting for a moment, by the way, that someone sits there and actually um, waggles that control, but if you are fine tuning it, then it's good for it not to introduce a discontinuity into your wave. Audio player. Um, let's bring up the same track. That <laughs> it's um. I'm not sure it's any. It's, it's it's an awful lot better, really. Actually, interestingly enough, right at two seconds, it. Yeah, 
yeah, it's, some of it's crashed, doesn't it? So, uh, vector subscript out of range. So I think we're. In, uh, so what are we doing there? I think we've. What have we hit? We've hit something. Oh, interesting. Smooth delay. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's try that again. Um. So at this point, our smooth delay is the same. Okay, I think what we need to do is to break this out slightly. So we need to pull this into its own variable. So let's do that. Um, let's call that delay. Oops. And then um, we'll have um, float delay equal to that. And we'll pop a breakpoint in there when it's playing. And to throttle the input, which what we're trying to do is smooth the input a bit, and it's um, yeah, it's having an interesting effect. And I did expect to have the wines, but that they're quite pronounced um, so we'll just see what's happening it should be working okay so what we'll do is we'll play it we won't change the what the uh, the delay this this um this this uh, difference here should be zero. These two should be the same. So let's run it up. Um, do the connections again. Suicidal cat, welcome to the stream. I don't think I don't know if we've seen you before. Oh, Minxie Rose. So take care. We'll see you again soon. Um, so welcome to the stream, Suicidal cat. So good to see you. Let's join these up. Start up. No problem. <laughs> I'm just glad you can join us. It's uh, uh it's nice to to have uh, to have people uh, you know take an interest in what what you're trying to do. There we go. Okay, so if we stick a uh, breakpoint over here in there, then we should sign that that is five. That's five. That's five. And so this um, this isn't going to be changing. So this is going to be five point five. That is, and our delay in samples is going to be twenty four hundred. Which is um we seem to be running at a sample rate of um of um forty eight K. Which is slightly higher than C D quality. So forty eight K is our sample rate currently. Uh, okay, so let's turn that away and go through. That bit's kinda of working as we would expect. So I think that crash happened when I went up to high, so I went up to two, I think, and that's the problem. Well, it's not crashing now, is it? Have I noticed that when it's at two, I'm not getting any any delay? It's only when it's above to I'm getting that delay. So that's something for another time to investigate why that is. But certainly getting the echo there. And if we want up the feedback, we should get even more.
yeah so plenty of it plenty of feedback going on so yes go sam welcome to the stream what's going on well we're building um we're building audio plugins uh, in C sharp, C oh, sorry, C plus plus, not C sharp. C C plus plus uh, is a new language to me, um, so that's what I'm uh, delving into, writing audio plugins. And that was uh, this is a delay plugin, so we're pretty much there with a delay plugin. We've got um, a, a smoothing function in there, which uh, does appear to be doing the smoothing. We are getting, not getting the, the really harsh discontinuity anymore, but it is actually quite a um, coarse um, change. So I was wondering if we should try increasing the step and see what happens let's um so what we're trying to do is smooth as we as people change the the um the delay function is to kind of smooth out that uh, that transition uh, between different delay rates um so that we don't get such a harsh um change so we can increase and decrease it and see what happens let's just we'll play with this a little bit more cool gazer thank you for the follow Welcome to the stream. Not seen you before, but a very warm welcome to you. Okay, let's oops, let's try and wire this up as we want. So let's put that audio player back in. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this configuration uh, so we don't have to keep doing that. Okay, so let's start the audio player up. Uh, lightness within. Play that. See, it's smaller. The larger it is, we get the clicks back. So let's just try um, making it even smaller. So let's make it down to that kind of size. Oops, we need to. No, we can't do that. We need to. We need to build. How long have we been programming? Uh, I'll call you Sam. In excess of thirty years. Uh, well, in excess of thirty years. So. Um, but um, so I've not. I programmed in C many many years ago, and now I'm looking at modern C++. Uh, I don't normally program in this language. Normally, this is um, a .NET Core C# -sharp channel. But um, we wrote a, uh, in, in the last project. There's a nine-part project where we wrote a synthesizer in .NET Core 3 with WPF and N Audio, um, which I may show towards the end of the stream. Um, so this is just kind of sparked an interest in this digital signal processing. So. Um, we're using uh, C++ in this series uh, with a framework called Juice, uh, which helps you build um, VST3 plugins and other kinds of audio plugins. In fact, a AAX and AU plugins and legacy v VST plugins as well. Uh, it also, you can write um, desktop um, GUI apps, uh, animations, um, audio applications, all kinds of things with the help of the Juice framework. So it's got lots of kind of functions that really can help us out. Let's build this again and see what having a really small smoothing factor is going to do for us. Is it going to make it a little bit better? I think we'll, we'll basically stop with the smoothing at this point, and we need to um, we need to look at some other things because there's, there's other reasons why we get those clicks. Juice is built for VS. No, it's not. It's um, it's a it's a plas platform agnostic um, library. Um, I'll show you actually. I'll show you Juice. So here's our project in the Juice uh, producer. So we're currently we're using an exporter of Visual Studio 2019. Um, so these are the files that we've got created. These are all the modules that have been brought in. This is a module that I created, FX Objects. Um, so it's using all these bits and pieces really to 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 create the project files for me and the solution file in Visual Studio. You, if you wanted to use any of those, you can use Xcode. Uh, you can use um, Make files in um, in Linux, whatever. So it's and also you can do iOS development as well. So it's really cross-platform stuff. So all this, all the things you can do, you can do on any platform virtually. So Sam, you're at university doing a computing science degree, you're really into programming and learning Java. Yeah, I learned Java um, on my Open University course. Um, Java was okay. We did um, we did hover frogs in our course, so frogs which could hover or change colour or go to different heights. So it's quite fun language Java. Um, I don't program in Java professionally, I'm probably in C sharp uh, professionally, but um, it's fun to try out different languages. Uh, so let's try this again. We get our. Oh, that's better. Can you hear it kind of heading towards that value? So 
so it kind of winds its way up towards it, which is what I wanted. And so Minxie Rose, if she was still listening with her headphones, wouldn't have those horrible clicks and pops which she was getting before, which are really nasty apparently on the, on the, on the headphones. You should be able to hear that depth of that echo is increasing. So that's not part of the music, so... This is the raw music. And as we bring in the wet signal. Lots and lots of echo. So hopefully that demonstrates it. Okay. So let's stop at that point. So okay, the next thing we want to look at is um there's another problem with this code. Uh this code obviously we're talking about digital signals here, so they have discrete values at discrete times. So um it isn't continuous time. Um, we are splitting our um, one second in in this case into um, I believe in this case it was forty eight thousand kind of segments. So it's every um, every one forty eight thousandth of a second we're taking a sample of the um, of the audio and we're storing that in our circular buffer. Um, and it's great when we've got a um, a delay time of point zero point five. Because really, if we multiply any of those um, numbers, uh, 48,000 or 24,000 or whatever, by half, we're going to get a whole number. But what if it was, you know, um, 0.51, the delay time? Then we're not going to get a whole number. And when we try to index into our buffer, our circular buffer, uh, with our read and write heads, then actually what we're going to get is um, we're going to get the wrong value. Because we're taking the integer, so I'll show you here, we're doing it we look in our read head, we're taking the um static cast between in. So uh, our um read head here, which is what we're reading from the buffer, that's a floating point number. And um we're taking the int of that, so we're losing the floating point, the fractional point of time really. And uh, what that means is we get the wrong uh, sample out. We get there's no sample in between, so sample at, uh, at uh, buffer location one and buffer location two. Okay, but there's no samples in between. We don't have any, but we want a sample in between. We want a sample, say it's um, 1.5 in our buffer, and of course that doesn't exist. So what can we do about that? Because we need to get that value out, at least approximate it. So if we go back over to um, this, I will I'll wipe my paint out. Yeah, let me cut that out. Oops, didn't want to cut out, did I? I want you just to delete. Uh, no, I can cut it out, that'll be fine. And we'll just, uh, we'll just refill. Okay, there we go. So, the problem we've got, let's draw some lines. So we have um, an axis here, this is the time axis. And remember, it's discrete time. It's not continuous time. So we have a sample. Let's change our colours. Let's go for... Um, uh, we've got a blue line there. I want to do the black line. Okay, let's go for a, um, a blue line now. So here, for example, is the sample at this time. And say, for example, here might be the next sample. Okay, so in our buffer, um, so no, we don't want to go that blue. Thank you. So if I get a pencil, so this is um, the buffer value is the x um, time so this is the x cell in our um in our circular buffer and this is x plus one okay so for example this might be 
for example, we might say this is uh, number 23, so the 23rd cell in our buffer, and this is 24. And when we do our calculation to find out where we want to read, what point we want to read, um, the floating point um, read head could, for example, point to 23.5. And that's where we want to read, but there's no such thing as a cell 23.5. So what we end up reading, we take the integer value of this, so we lose the 0.5, and we actually read the sample at 23. And you can see here, there's quite a big difference between these samples. The amplitude of these samples is quite, dip, is quite distinctly different. So we're going to be, instead of reading the sample at this point here, so if we put a nice a red blob in it, this is where we want to read. Instead of reading the value there, we're reading it over here. So what we really want to do is actually try and work out what the amplitude of our signal would have been. Um, yes, sir, thank you for the, yes, the, Doug, good to see you. Yeah, um, sorry, sorry, Doug, I, I, your link didn't come through because of, um, Nightbot kills all links, but thanks for the idea. I, 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 I'm going to get myself a proper drawing package and a, and a, and a, and a graphics tablet because I'm finding myself doing more of this drawing. So um, that's what I'm, I'm but at the moment what I said put with my, my terrible drawing and, and paint. Uh, so what we can do, this is, bear in mind this is a sign, this is some kind of wave. It's a waveform which could be going up and down all over the place. But one thing we can do is we can try and guess. We can say if we drew a line between these two points, then we could say, okay, let's. Let's go up. We could say we could we could actually work out what that point was. So this point here. And that would be a better guess than going back here. Well it might not be right, but it'd be a much better guess. And this is a technique called linear. Linear, linear because it's a straight line interpolation. You see, about if I had a nice pen, I'll be able to write that a bit more, um, a bit more legibly. But yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll stick with the technology we got at the moment. So this might come out, I don't know, as, as some of the value, but it's going to be going to be possibly a better guess. I mean, it could be. Now, we, I mean, there's always the possibility that this wave actually did this in between there. Okay, so in that case, we, we've, we've not guessed right. It should have been lower and higher. But this is one technique. So remember, these these points are very, very close together in time. So this distance is uh, on a CD quality track would be... Um, one forty-four hundred, one forty-four thousandth, or actually, um, uh, more than one forty-four thousandth of a second. This would be one over forty-four one hundred of a second on a CD. So the chance of it actually dipping is, you know, relatively low. But it's, it, we, we, we're in the world of guessing and trying to get, make a better guess than going to the previous point. So what we're going to try to use linear interp interpolation to actually work out uh, a better guess for our values. Okay. So this problem is being caused here, isn't it? So let's think about what we need to do. Okay. Um, so we want to, rather than going for the, um, we want to try and work out what the actual value was if um, if there was a fraction involved. Okay. So um, with our toolkit of parts that we've got here we actually got a function called do linear interpolation which is here so this is part of our um fx objects toolkit which i, I created um from the um 
creating audio effects uh, in C++ book. Um, and this is going to do our linear interpolation for us, but let's go and have a look at Wikipedia just so that we can understand what linear uh, interpolation actually means mathematically. Wikipedia uh, linear Um, and down here, basically, it gives you um, a, pro, a, a function which will do it. Linear interpretation, we take two floats in. Uh, so there's, the, um, there's a point V0, a point V1, and then there's a fraction in between. So on our diagram, this would be, uh, let's change color to, uh, what should we have? This green here, this would be V0. This would be V1, and the distance here is going to be T. Okay, so it's saying that this is the formula 1 minus T times V0 plus T times V1. So that's the linear interp interpolation function. Luckily, we've got one of those built in. So do linear interpolation is going to be what we're going to use. Let's see what this, what this takes. So, um, this is going to take uh, this is going to take in this value. So let's pull these out. So we'll say that um, uh, float v zero. We'll, we'll use the same notation as we had before uh, on that um, on that Wikipedia article. It's going to be equal to that. Okay. Um, and then float um, v1 is going to be the same thing except it's going to be moved across one okay and we're going to put plus one in here even though this is not correct and then we're going to um, then we're going to pop those into the linear interpret interpolation we need the fraction um, the fraction of the um, the read head. So up off here, we'll say that um, int um, read head int is going to be equal to um, that static cast there. Okay, and um, we're going to have a floating point version. Uh, float read head float is going to be equal to um, the read head minus uh, read head int. So that will give us the fractional part of it, read head float. And that was called the T in that, um, in that formula. So we'll call it T. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to use. Um, now we haven't got we haven't got our code rush. I've got code rush, um, and it um, average speed calculation is exactly what it is. Uh, basically, do the code. It's 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 a point between two. So if you're doing your calculus, when you start off with calculus, that's what you do. Don't you? You draw a line between two things, and then you say. Well, the value in between is going to be that value. It's kind of the same same idea. So yes, Doug, it's uh, it is average. It's an average calculation of some kind. Okay. Um, well, well, I was going to use um, Code Rush to show you that to actually write the formula in a comment, but um, looks like we don't get um, rich comments in a C plus plus project, which is a bit of a shame. So I can't do that. Okay. Um, so we've got our fractional part here. Um, so this isn't correct because we're in a circular buffer, and if if the read head was actually pointing at the very last um, element in our buffer, uh, we would overflow the buffer at this point. So we need to actually um, we need to um, wrap it round. So what we need to say so this is going to be um, rather than doing the cast twice. This is going to be read head int. 
And what we're going to say here is that um, uh, we're going to have um, a new int, which is um, uh, read head plus one. And that's going to equal uh, our read head um, increment. We're going to add one to that, and then we're going to say if a read head plus one is greater than or equal to. So we're not going to catch me out on that again for the um, delay buffer size. Um, delay buffer size. Then. Um, read head plus one minus equals delay buffer size. So we've wrapped around, and then this is going to be read head plus one. So you can go, you can go uh, read head plus one uh, mod buffer. Size. Yes, you can use the mods. And there's other ways, other things you can do as well. Um, with um, so we ha have actually built into um, into the uh, module that I created uh, for this. There's a, an efficient circular buffer, and it doesn't do all this um, this kind of testing. It actually uses bit patterns and um, uh, the bitwise and to work out all this. But we, we, what, we, what I'm trying to do is, is just work from kind of first principles, so you can see exactly what it's doing. Um, and then we're going to swap to using kind of more efficient built-in classes um, at some point in the future. Um, maybe not today, but at, certainly at some point we're going to go back and say, right, we don't need we don't need to use um, to use all this linear interpolation code, and we don't need to have um, to have this code which determines the, the difference between the write head and the read head. If we use our circular buffer class, all we do is say the delay is this. Go and get me that that sample, and th and it will actually do the linear interpolation and pull out the sample um, that we want, the delayed sample. So you know, there's clever things we can do, but that's okay. Doug, don't worry. Come with, me with your comments. It's always good to get the interaction going. But there's reasons why we're doing it, like kind of um, in the, in the most simplistic way, really. Um, we could actually write our own linear interpolation, interpolation um, function as well, but I didn't see the point as we've, we've got one, and it's such a simple thing anyway. So we're going to pass in here um, v0, v1, and t. And that's going to be our, our kind of smooth value. And so um, that's the left delay buffer one. So this is going to be equal to that. And then we need to do exactly the same for the right hand channel. So let's go and rename some of these. This is um, what can we say here? Um, Uh, left sample left sample one so we'll just copy those across Let's spell right first there we go um, Less sample one, and we've got T, which is our um, left fraction. It goes into there. So we need to do the same now for the right hand channel. So we can just copy. Um, uh, actually, the fraction is going to be the same, so we can just call it fraction. We're not yet splitting split our read and, read and write heads, which we're going to do. Uh, so that's okay. So now we can just simply say that um, 
the right sample. And right sample, and that's going to be from the right buffers. So we're dealing with stereo here. Unlike the um, the delay effect that I built for um, the synthesizer, the, the .NET Core 3 synthesizer project, um, which was a mono system, we're now dealing with full full stereo. This is going to be do interpolation on that. Let's do linear interpolation on those new values. That'll be right and right, and the same fraction. For both of them. Okay, so that should get our delayed sample um, from anywhere in between, um, in between the samples that we've got. Our sampling rate uh, will limit our um, ability to get the accurate sample, but we're now at least getting a better approximation using linear interpolation. So I don't know if we'll be able to hear the difference, but we will know in our mind that we are doing a better job. Now, there's other kinds of interpolations we could do, uh, which would be much more accurate. Um, but I think in practice, the linear interpolation is going to be you know, fine for us to do. We can take many more points either side of the, um, the point we're trying to find, the, the point in between um, our uh, uh, array slots. We can, we can take all the values before and afterwards, and then we can kind of start to plot out a function where we could fit it to a to a um, x squared rather than a linear, uh, um, a linear um, interpolation. We could perhaps do quadratic uh, interpolation where we're looking at um, some function of x squared rather than a function of x. And then you could go into you know, x cubed, whatever, and, and you could really try to work it out um, very, very accurately. Uh, and that's what things like your digital analog convert actually does. But this is going to be fine for us, I think. So let's see if we can hear any difference. I'm not 100% sure we're going to hear any difference, per se, but we all know. The only difference we'll hear is if I got it wrong, I suspect. Let's turn that off. So there we are. This is just the pure, unadulterated audio. I think that, that number is too, too small. It's taking too long to get there. See lots and lots of echo going on there. So I'd like to show you with pure sine wave, really, but I think it's it seemed a bit quiet, the sine wave. So um, I can, you, can, you should be able to hear that going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with that, that number a bit. So you can do some scratching, some DJ scratching, couldn't you? You need to certainly hear the echo as it as it oscillates towards the um, target. Okay, so let's stop that. And there's the echo of the plays. I'll stop the play, and the buffer's still going, as you can hear. This is quite fun. Okay. So let's just do one more tweak of this number. So let's go for uh, what did I have just then? Let's go back. Let's try making that five. I suspect that those, that number is, is still too low, really. So all part of it is actually you know, tweaking and finding these right values. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's down to experience or just experimentation. Um, let's try this again. Uh, play that. I think that's okay, isn't it? It's interesting. It's, it's such a um, the 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 parameter, the delay parameter, has such an effect 
that it, you get quite prominent whining sound. If it was on the volume, for example, it would be much more um, in the background. You wouldn't notice that you're actually sweeping towards your target volume. This is so sensitive towards the delay that it's um, with no effect. Okay, let's stop there. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, I'm going to commit those changes. I believe we're okay those changes now. Let's commit those changes, and then we can start to look at um, taking this delay uh, effect in a slightly different direction. So. I'll say completed delay effect and, um, and commit that. And then we'll go over to our git flow and we'll start a new feature. And we're going to call this chorus. Because we're going to now try and change our plugin to be rather than a, a just a delay, um, a delay effect, we're going to try and set it up as a um, there's a chorus effect. So chorus and delay are quite closely related. OK, uh, so start the feature. So we're using Git flow here. Uh, if you're not coming across Git flow, it's simply a way of um, working on feature branches from your uh, development branch so that can, we can swap back to the um, to the delay um, plugin. Uh, if we suddenly go horribly wrong here, we're not going to lose any any kind of our work. We do, we've got to this point. And in fact, we can actually stop this and go back and work on a different feature. Uh, so it's just a way of working with Git. And it's all been automated by a plugin, which we've got in for uh, Visual Studio. OK. So what what is a chorus? Well, to tell you the truth, it's very, basically it is one of these. Uh, it is a delay feature. However, let's bring up, um, what's that? Have I just killed the bot? I've just killed the bot. Sorry about that. I'll start the bot again. There is a bot running. Um, in fact, there's three bots running in, in chat. There's Nightbot and there's um, Cloudbot, but also got my own bot, my multi, um, multi-platform multi bot, which is uh, Alphabot, which is running currently there. Uh, if you want to know what um, what you can do with um, with the Alphabot, just type exclamation point help and you get the the commands that I've written. Uh, one of the interesting commands there actually for you uh, is the ask command. Uh, ask what is um, our delay effect. And um, we should get some kind of reasonable answer. There you go. So that's using cognitive services to, um, to work out the answer to a question. It doesn't always get them anywhere near right. But it does. Um, it does most of the time comes back to something re reasonably interesting. So that's your. Um, that's the definition of a delay effect. So feel feel free to use that. There are some cooldowns on all these commands, but they're in about a minute, so um, they can only be used um, unless you're a moderator uh, a certain number of times. So uh, okay, so we've got that running again. Let's uh, shut that down. Okay. So um, we want paint. Let's open. Our delay. Don't say. Okay. So, what is a um, what's a chorus effect all about? Well, a chorus is is really quite simple. Um, what we what we're going to do basically with a chorus effect is we're going to um, this value D, which is the delay in samples, we're not going to let the user control that anymore. But we're going to use um, something called a low frequency oscillator. So I'm going to create a circle here. And I'm going to put some jagged lines in it. Um, uh, can I draw? A wave like thing in it. Look, I can. And we're going to we're going to write uh, some text in there. And nice and big. MFO low frequency oscillator. Uh, 
And what we're going to do is use that low frequency oscillator uh, to actually control the value of D. So we're going to set the D to, to, to a range of values. And then we're going to sweep backwards and forwards through that range of values. So if I write, if I do, I don't know, if I, um, I draw an arrow, perhaps. like that to indicate and then maybe a couple of lines like that so these lines represent an upper and a lower bound uh, of um, values of d and we're going to basically this frequency low frequency oscillator which is going to work at um, some you know, uh, a frequency below human hearing so less than 20 less than 20 hertz is going to basically sweep backwards and forwards in those as we play the music through the wet and dry channels okay so that's going to give us what we call a chorus and you've all probably heard a chorus uh, as in uh, when a choir of people sing together you get that kind of swell um, and that's what it's, it's kind of it fills in a lot of gaps it, you get that feeling there's lots of people um, playing or singing whatever that's the kind of effect it's going to give us um, and in fact there's a very closely related effect which we're also going to get for free by doing this called a flanger and the flanger is um it actually originated i don't know if it was the beatles that did it first first but certainly they did a lot of, uh, a lot of their music experimented with these effects where they had a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and they actually put a either someone put their thumb against one of the reels on the left hand channel or the right hand channel or whatever um to slow it down very slightly uh, or, or kind of pulse their finger against it or put a weight even on the on the on the reel so it slows it down um very very slightly and you get this kind of flange effect which will, will it's hard to describe really it's like a wah wah i guess but we'll, we'll hear it when we create one i don't know how long how far we're going to get along this towards getting the chorus done but once you've got the chorus done getting the flanger done is really quite simple um, so that's so this is going to be the chorus so let's just uh, label this up um, it's going to be a chorus effect so that's what we're going for and we're going to add into our into our mix this low frequency oscillator okay so that's the kind of aim so in order to do that, we're going to need some more control. So let's um, go over to our um, to our plugin editor. Uh, you can see here we've got our, um, our wet mix dry slider, our feedback slider, and our delay slider. For a chorus, the delay slider will be inactive because we're going to take control of the delay and we're going to sweep it backwards and forwards. But we do need some other controls. So these are for the chorus effect. And um, we'll just mark these up for um, now. We'll just we'll leave, we, won't, we won't mark them as extra because um, wet and dry mix and feedback still apply. So this is we're going to have another slider, which is going to be our um, um, we're going to call it our chorus rate. So the the speed with which we oscillate our low frequency oscillator. So it's going to go from I don't know about half half a hertz to a maximum of 20 hertz so well below human hearing range but using a, an lfo to modulate the parameters of um of an effect is a, a well uh, used uh, feature and as we kind of build on this chorus idea um, we might actually try to look at a really com really complicated chorus setups which have multiple low frequency oscillators and and, and that kind of idea so we're going to have a chorus rate slider uh, we're going to have a chorus um, depth slider which is um, when we've got that range we're seeing a set a range and we're going to start in the middle you know do we do we oscillate here or do we go right to the edges how, how big an oscillation do, are we going to have so this is going to be a slider and this is going to be the chorus depth slider and we're going to have a and um, we're going to have something called a phase offset so we're not going to worry about the phase offset to begin with but um this is an effect and this is the thing which um a number of um effects units on synthesizers 
do allow you to do and once again uh, we're going to keep it simple by having uh, one phase offset slider but you can actually have left and right channel or even center channel phase phase changes and, and we'll, i'll tell you what we'll, we'll, we'll concentrate on getting some code written and we'll look at and tell you what, what phase offset is going to do for us and we can when, when we actually get to, that, to um, actually code in that bit but we're not going to use a phase effect uh, a phase offset that should be a phase offset to begin with phase offset slider that's it okay so we need to actually have um some controls to play with here so let's go back over to our plugin editor this is where we define our gui um and um we're going to need to have another three rotary sliders aren't we so let's just um pinch these bits of code um, and we need some you know, we need these values as well so we might as well do these so these are uh, pointers to the actual values that these controls are going to um, be set to. As we change them, they're going to change this value. So what we're doing here is we are basically connecting up our sliders uh, so that we can read them within the processor. So we're going to set a value and we're going to be able to read the value. Likewise, the um, not only uh, can the user set the parameters uh, in this way, but they can also be set by automation within your DAW, your digital audio workstation. Uh, and that's called automation. So th we, we're kind of exposing these values for uh, other programs to actually change automatically as well. So this is why we, we're not just using a, the observer pattern and using kind of a, a listener on the slider to detect changes in it. We're, we're actually using um, a much more sophisticated um, method really to do that. This is going to be the uh, chorus rate value. Uh, this is going to be our chorus depth value and our phase offset value. Okay, and we'll talk about phase offset offset as I say uh, um, when we when we need to actually discuss it because we're not going to implement phase offset straight away. So make a rotary slider. This is going to be our chorus. Uh, chorus rate slider. Uh, we need to actually um, fix this. This wasn't in DB, was it? Let's not have it in D DB. Chorus rate slider. Uh, I think this is going to be in Hertz. I think. And um, we'll call it rate. And this will be. Uh, Chorus rate slider, and the dip, this is going to be the chorus rate value, and for the chorus rate slider, we need to make it visible on the screen, which we do by that. Uh, and then we're going to have um, chorus depth slider. Um, this is going to have a value between zero and one, so it's it's really can't doesn't have any units as such. So let's just say depth. Um, and then we've got we'll call that the depth. Uh, the depth here. And here, and make that visible. And last but not least, was the phase offset. And this is also going to be um, initially we're going to have a phase offset between zero and one, um, but we'll we'll figure out what it means. Um, as we come to it and we may want to be able to have left and right hand phase offsets for example so but we're going to start off simple chorus uh, what did i call it phase offset phase offset yeah phase 
these offset slider there, it's there, and there, and this is the phase offset value. Okay, so that's we've set up our sliders. Now we need to actually display them. Um, so we're going to have two rows of controls, I think. Here, um, no, let's have we're going to have six, aren't we? Let's have two rows. So this is a, a grid. This is analogous to kind of a CSS grid, really. It can help us lay out our our GUI. So we're going to have two rows. Sniper noob. No, I don't use Go. I've never, I've never really. I think, I think I might have gone to the GoLang website a couple of times and had a look, but no, I've not used Go. Uh, have you used it at all, Sniper noob? Um, it'd be interesting to get your views on it. Uh, we'll just have two rows of three. We're going to be changing this around anyway. What, um, what? Are your thoughts about go um snap and, and um and, and why 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 does it um what kind of niche is it trying to fill is it is it general purpose programming languages language or is it um trying to do a specialized um a specialized job as you're trying to learn it what's its what's its kind of what's its place in the world i know needn't have one i guess it can be general purpose but is that its aim or is it trying to solve a particular problem I'm always interested in um in different different languages and where their strengths and weaknesses are. Okay, so we've got our um, so we should have two two rows of three controls, and we're going to need to put labels on them. All this uh, we're not quite there yet, so we're still um, we're still very much in the early designs for it. In the crypto world, uh, Snubbin says building. Uh, Mining pools goes much faster uh, than Python. Okay, so is it uh, is it um, is it a Python-like language, or language, or is it a compiled language? Is it statically typed or dynamically typed? What are it, what are its features? I did have a glance at the the website, but uh, as as you know, I'm um, I think taking on C plus plus is probably enough at the moment to try and learn, learn, try and work on Go as well. But maybe maybe something we can do on stream. Um, Gareth Hubble is the one for the more um, I'll, I'll say esoteric. He's he's used different languages. So um, he he did some streams with Rust, for example. So um, which is probably an alternative to C plus plus, actually. Certainly an alternative to C. Uh, okay, so we've I built that then. So let's um, have a look about what we've got. So we've still got we haven't got them visible. So why aren't they visible? Because oh, I haven't put them on the grid. Okay. And the grid items we're going to put more items on our grid here. So, uh, snap in if you won't be able to post that link. But if you want to, if you want to um, help me out, you can post your link into my Discord. I'll send, give you an invite to the Discord. Uh, if you'd like to post your link in there, in the general discussion area, I'll go and have a look at it. Drixo, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Glad you could join us. Okay, so this is now going to be the chorus. Right slider. So there's a bit of ceremony in Juice and setting up all these things, but um, we will eventually start building some tools. If you're new, and want to learn programming? You watch a bunch of you watched a bunch of videos. Well, watching videos is great. Um, have you actually written any code, uh, Rickso? Because that's really the key to learning programming, rather than just watching videos. Actually, write your own code. Um, be interesting to know um, how far you've got. Um, in, in developing your own stuff, you've done some py some Python. Well, that's good. So, you, is there a particular a particular project that you're working on? Because one of the keys to learning a programming language is often have a project that kind of you're interested in, you're passionate about, um, that keeps your interest, and so you you kind of learn. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm getting into the DSP, digital signal processing. So, use that. Try and learn a bit of C plus plus. 
as well as juice framework and so I'm kind of um how do I choose a project it's got to be something that really interests you so for example if I don't know uh, if you're into sports you're really into sports maybe uh, maybe I don't know what country you're from but maybe if you're into in soccer or cricket or American football or basketball or ice hockey or whatever you could try writing something which was I don't know um, kept track of league tables to begin with displayed them in a web page or on a, on a on a desktop application um, that's the kind of, you know, if you're really into that you, you follow your, your sports team you could track their league, league progress in that but there's all kinds of things you do um, you know if you just find something you're really interested in because one of the dangers when you start learning and you start a project is if it's, if it's not really something that's really interests you you're going to kind of lose focus and it's going to you're not going to c- complete it so you won't get that because when you if you're trying to you're trying to actually get into programming as a uh, as a job mr1 dev mr1 dev good evening welcome to the stream good to see you so Rick, so you're actually trying to get into um programming mr1 dev and you're working in pi game in python yeah i've not really done an awful lot of python I, I, you're 17 so you you, you look you still look it's a hobby at the moment but you, you you're thinking of uni um college um perhaps so, Mr. One Dev, um, I've not done an awful lot of Python. I've done a little bit, but it was many, many years ago. But I'm quite, impre- I'm quite impressed in the, the kind of the science support and the data science support that that, that you get from Python. Um, there was a re- the recent um, imaging of a black hole. I believe that all the data, the, the the thousands of terabytes of data, was all crunched in Python code. Uh, to produce that image so it's really quite impressive what it can do um and it, i think it's relatively easy to learn at least to begin with so um so it's good i mean uh, any programming language is is, is going to be good to learn if you can learn it and you can use it and can produce um so if you're trying to get into programming produce some kind of portfolio with uh with uh with your chosen languages language or languages and that's fantastic uh, certainly encourage if you are if you are trying to um even if you're actually at currently at university or college and you are working on a computer science or software engineering degree then um, you need to work outside of your coursework and you need to build yourself a portfolio because that's what's going to kind of make you stand out really it's about logic and mathematics right yeah <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to avoid too much mathematics on this stream because um this is obviously a very mathematical subject um, but um, we're not going to be able to avoid it all the time. We've just done some linear interpolation, so a little bit of math crept in. Okay, let's see if we can see our extra three um, controls, our rate, depth, and phase offset. They've, they've all got onto the top row there, so that's fine. I'll just force them onto the bottom row um, by having just the three slots in a row. There we go. We build that, and that should be enough for our GUI. Uh, so it takes a little while to build. Uh, something we might have to look at at some point is uh, trying to speed up the builds but it's probably about what 15 seconds something like that it just seems a long time when you're talking uh let's have a look there we have that that juice logo will go away in a second and then we have our phase offsets currently we don't have any limits on them the limits we're going to set now so they're just kind of continuous between one and zero at the moment that's in hertz that's depth which is i think gonna, it's going to be turned out to be fractions of pi but we won't bother with that and this is uh, going to be once again fractions of pi, but we're not going to worry about that too much. So, okay, so we've done the editor side. So now, what we've done is um, by creating these these unique pointers, we've given us a way of connecting up um, these um, these slider values to our plugin state. So we now need to go and extend our plugin state uh, to include these new values. So we've got rate depth and phase offset so let's go over to our plugin processor this is all going to happen up near the constructor so the constructor has this slide so we've got a plugin state which is um 
if we go over to the plugin processor, our plugin state has a type of uh, it has a grand class of audio processor value tree state. And basically, it's just a place where we can hold our values in one location, our parameter values. And the parameters, uh, in this case, are basically user-controllable parameters. So they're going to set the parameters and change the effect that those, those parameters have. OK. So um, this, uh, this constructor initialization um, basically takes a, a processor. Now this is a redo, a, a redo or undo processor, which we, we set to the null pointer. We give it a name, parameter in this case, and then we call this function create parameter layout. And this is where we're actually setting up our um, our parameters. So we need to we need to know to add some parameters. Okay, so we're using auto here, which is basically the same as a var in C, C sharp. So this means that the compiler is going to work out what the um, what the uh, what the type of this is going to be. Uh, so we're going to have um, an audio parameter float. So remember, this was a pointer, a unique pointer. So we're now going to create that pointer. The pointer is going to point to something of type audio parameter float, and then we get to initialize our audio parameter float here. What do you like about the values is accurate and using float, yes. We need to use floating point numbers because um, our audio is encoded as floating point numbers rather than integer numbers. This is going to be rate then. And we're going to call this rate. And rate is going to go from 0 0.1 to 20. And it's going to start off at 10. This is where we're going to define um, this is the, this, this is how quickly um, our low frequency oscillator is going to oscillate at the frequency of the LFO. Okay, so and the faster that is, the quicker it's going to it's going to sweep through the um, the delay values uh, for the give us the different depth of chorus, a different feel of chorus really. Uh, then we got auto, and then we got depth param. Um, once again, this is uh, from the standard library. We're going to make a unique, so make a unique pointer. It's going to be of type um, audio parameter float again. Audio parameter float. Um, we can initialize it in the same fashion. So, so the the depth is going to be called have an identifier of depth, which is what we used in our editor. Depth is going to be the name of it, and we're going to go from zero point zero uh, to one point zero, and it's going to be a default. I don't know, zero point five, perhaps. And then we get we have another one which is going to be our phase offset. Uh, phase offset. Uh, this is going to be phase. What do we call it over in the editor? We called it phase offset. We need to have the same name over here. With a, an identifier, so we do need to figure out how to um, not have to use these string literals. And this is going to go from zero to one, and it's going to start off at the default value of zero. Okay, so that's wired up those bits. Let's just rebuild and make sure everything's happy. like it's okay Come on. okay so it's been that now the final thing to do is we've got a vector here which contains our audio parameters we need to push those onto the um into the vector and you notice we're using move here 
So uh, because um, these are unique pointers, um, we can't copy them. Um, we've got to move them because a unique pointer only only one thing can, you can only point to only one thing can use it. So we've defined them here. So in order for the vector to to have that pointer, we need to use the move. What's called move semantics in um, in C++. So I'm still learning about all this. So um, if you have more knowledge than I do about move semantics and unique pointers, um, then I'd be very interested in hearing what you have to say about them. We could have used shared pointers, I guess. And then the very final thing is we actually return that vector from beginning to end, and then that sets up our uh, parameters in our uh, our value value state tree, or what's it, I never think what it's called. Our uh, audio processor value tree state. This is what we're and we're returning a parameter layout. So there's all the bits and pieces we've got there now. So we'll just build that again just to make sure. Right, okay, so next thing we're going to do, so I've got some uh, my scribbled notes here about what, what what the steps are. So I'm hoping that in the next half an hour or so we can actually get this to a point where it might actually do something, but we may run out of time. Um, I'm actually on vacation at the moment, so this stream is being done courtesy of my, my wife who's um, allowed me to stream while we're on holiday, so... We'll see how far we get. Okay, um, so what do we want to do? Let's think. Okay. So we're going to have we're going to do this as a chorus, a stereo chorus effect. So we're going to try and affect um, left and right. Initially, it will affect them exactly the same way, but we're going to actually have separate left and right channel um, effects here. Um, this is when we get to the phase offset part of it. So, um, okay, let's start off by defining a few variables. Okay, uh, so we're going to want to have. Um, A left a left read head and a right read head so we can read from the buffers our delay buffers separately on reading at the same time that's for a future feature when we come to the phase offset so we'll create those for now okay what else do we need well, we need our LFOs. So we're going to need an LFO for the left and right hand side. So um, once again, a float, which will be the left low frequency oscillator. And a float, which is going to be the right low frequency oscillator. And we probably need some more bits and pieces as we go along. We're going to need... Um, float which is going to be um, what we're going to call our step and uh, that should be okay we'll start off with those things okay over in our processor we're going to need to set those to initial values so we want um, we'll just set the read heads up here So uh, left read head and right read head. Just tap those over. And we want um, a left LFO. Remember LFO's low frequency oscillator. Initialize that to zero. A right LFO. 
uh, and we want to step. That's going to be zero as well. Okay. So the next thing to do is to make sure we also initialize our values and prepare to play. So this is when we start a piece of audio or start streaming audio, prepare to play is called. And we're going to need to um, set some values up in here. So um, we're going to set our uh, left LFO, FLO, LFO uh, equal to zero, and our right LFO equal to zero here. We don't need to reset our, our right heads because they're going to be calculated. Uh, read it, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's go down to our process audio blocks. This is where all the kind of magic happens. Sniper Noob, thanks for joining us. Um, have a good evening yourself. So um, hopefully see you again soon. Take care. Okay. So this is where we process our audio. Um, and basically what we're doing here is you're grabbing the left and right channels of audio and we're stepping through a whole buffer, an input buffer worth of these um of these um of these channels. Uh we're doing all what we did last time. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna comment some of this stuff out. Um, um what level of comment you know, should we do um all this at the bottom should be fine so let's just comment out everything there for now and what we're going to do is obviously we're going to have to kind of bring it back into scope so we're going to have some way of selecting between having a delay and a chorus and then the code that's down here will come back into play and we'll um we'll try and figure out what to do with it exactly but let's let's start off by commenting that out so currently our plugin does nothing okay So let's figure out what we do with our low frequency oscillators. So our left low frequency oscillator has got to be given a function of some kind. Um, and uh, that function should be a sine wave. Uh, so let's go over to a graphing calculator here and we'll put uh, y equals sine of x in there and there's a sine wave so this is oscillating between uh, 0 and what uh, minus 1 and plus 1 which is what we want but I think you can see that it's actually um, going from pi from 0 to 2 pi is the kind of the distance here and we don't want that we want it to go we want all this high, our single sine wave um, cycle to fit between 1 and 0 we can do that by multiplying by um, 2 pi. So sine 2 pi x is giving us this, um, this sine wave with one cycle fitting in between uh, 1 and 0. Because one between 1 and 0 is basically all we need. We only need this section of the wave it's going to go up and down so it's going to oscillate back we've got an oscillator which is going now at a certain frequency this is one hertz so one cycle per second if this was a second of time um oscillating between zero to plus one to zero to minus one back to zero again so it's other cat starting from scratch here yeah? just got back on the stream yeah so what we're doing now is uh, we're I've commented out the code which we used for our, our delay and we're going to um, 
influence, low frequency oscillator, and trying to get a chorus effect. Uh, so that's basically the, the waveform we're after. Uh, so um, sine of 2 pi, and then the x is the, is the interesting part of it. OK, so we can now say this is going to be um, sine of um, 2 times uh, have we got a constant called pi at all? Um, that should be left. We don't have a buy. Yep, there we go. So we need to include um, this file to get that. And what we want to do is multiply that now by um, our step. And we need to initialize step, don't we? Do we initialize step up here? Uh, so it's step to zero. So we now are prepared to play. We need to also set the step to zero. OK. Uh, and our right. LFO is going to be exactly the same to begin with. Uh, but with our phase offset, we're going to we're going to change it. But we're not going to do that yet. We're going to try and get something working. Uh, so that's our uh, right. So our step now needs to change. We've gone. We would have gone once through this um, buffer. I is zero currently. When we get to I. I is 1, we want a different value of step, because remember, the step is basically the frequency. Um, so here in our, not in that one, in the, here, you can see we get through, this is 1 hertz. Okay, so if I want to now, I want a, a, a half a hertz um, frequency, I multiply it by 0.5, and now I only get half a cycle in one second, if you imagine that being one second. And um, if I wanted to get, I don't know, 20, you can see that's 20 times a second. That's basically the frequency. But we can't, you can't use the frequency rule like that because we're actually not working in hertz. We're working in samples. Um, so what we have to do is define the, the, um, the step as a fraction of the sampling rate. So what we're going to say is we're going to... Step is going to now increase on this for the next time through to calculate the um, the LFO. It's going to become it's going to be our rate, which is uh, the plugin date dot get raw parameter value, and it's going to be our rate. Uh, and that is going to be divided by the sampling rate. And there should be a function get sample rate, which give me the sample rate. So and for CD quality, that will be like 44,100. So if this was 20, it would be 20 divided by 44,100, which means the um, which means we'd go a tiny fraction uh, Along the x-axis, and so which a tiny fraction on the y-axis in our sine sine function. So that's our left and right uh, oscillators oscillating now, and we got a, we're going to get a value out of them. So um, what we need to do now is to um, multiply the value that we get out by our depth. So um, so left. LFO, and we'll do it separately so that we can um, see it happening if we step through. It's going to be multiplied by our plugin state. So we dereference 
the pointer to plug in state with the star and the front of the dereference operator and then we're going to get a uh, raw parameter value and that's our depth remember depth goes between 0 and 1 and our right LFO is going to be set the same way okay so what we should probably do is only dereference that once uh, this is going to be float um, depth equals that and then we're just going to multiply by depth okay right Okay, so the next thing we need to do is um, we're going to use a feature of Juice called the JMap. So what we've got at the moment, we've got a left and right oscillator, which is oscillating between plus one and minus one. Um, but that's not the actual value we want. We want to be varying. If we look back to the um, to our diagram here, we want to be varying um, some rate here, some delay. Um, and basically, what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to we're going to oscillate between two extremes of um of values in seconds so we're not going to use uh, d we're not going to go through between d's directly we're going to work out what the d values are what we're going to do is we're going to oscillate between um if i can write on here we're going to oscillate between uh zero point zero zero five and zero Point zero three, and these numbers are chosen very exactly because these are the numbers which correspond to gaining an effect of a chorus. Um, you can use other values and you get different effects, but um, these are the two values we need for the chorus effect. So what's going to happen basically is we're going to oscillate now our our um, our delay. Whereas before we were able to set it with a control anywhere between zero and two seconds, now our low frequency oscillators can control the value of, of, of the delay and it's going to vary between um, five milliseconds and 30 milliseconds. So a very, very small delay, but it's going to, it's going to cause the, the, the desired effect. At least I hope it is. Okay, so this is this modulation of this. Um, this delay parameter is is the important part of, that we're kind of learning from this effect because modulating um, parameters is basically um, pretty fundamental to creating different types of effects. Okay. Right. So we want a. Um so, Sodal Cat, thank you very much for the follow. And I haven't been giving anyone electric ALF hype, so here's some hype for you. So, thank you very much for that that follow. It's very, very kind of you to to do that. Um, so, we want a floating point value. This is going to be um, our um, what should we call it? So, we're going to be mapping a value. So, this is going to be our left left LFO. Uh, mapped and we're going to use this function jmap so um, I'm just going to try and f remember what the code for it is so it's a, a jmap a juice map okay and what we can say is there's got to be an input to it so um, the input is going to be left LFO okay and this is going to vary between minus one and plus one and we want it to map that day map come on we want it to map that to um 0 0.055 milliseconds and 30 milliseconds so hopefully j map is going to uh, work for me And these need to be floats. There we go. 
so that's how a mapped value so um for example if it comes in at minus one it's going to map to five mil five milliseconds if it comes in plus one it's going to map to 30 milliseconds and any value in between will be automatically mapped by that that jmap function so it's um it's a pretty pretty powerful thing so let's have a right lfo mapped uh, we're going to pass that into that's right into there and it'd be exactly the same mapping we'll just put a uh, comment here says is um chorus effect because when we come to do a flanger we'll find we have very similar code which is why a flange implementing the flanger effect um is going to be um a piece of cake once we get this working okay so now um you can see before we had delay in samples is sample rate times a smooth delay um now we're going to um the delay we don't need a smooth delay anymore because we're using a sine wave and sine wave is is by its nature a smooth change so that'll be fine but what we need is delay in samples uh, and we're going to have to have a left delay in samples and a right delay in samples i believe that's what we created uh did we create left and right delay in samples no we didn't so we need to create those uh, so float left delay in samples. so remember that we, we're inputting out our, our delays are happening um not in real time so they're happening uh, we, we're in we, we're specifying number of seconds or milliseconds in this case uh for the um for the delay but in fact it's going to be a number of samples so one second for example is 44,100 samples of delay so we need um we need to actually define these figures so float of uh, right uh, delay in samples like that uh, so we're going to have to go to initialize those. Hey, Charbonneau's raiding. Thank you so much for the raid. Part of 11. That's brilliant. So welcome to welcome to the stream. We're actually um, still working on audio plugins on the stream. I don't know if people are watching ads at the moment. Uh, as soon as we see someone pop into chat, do say hello if you're from Ed's uh, stream and just popped into I just raid it in and, and, and uh, I'll give you some, well, I'll do it now, some, some electric, so some hyperspatial ALF hype. So this is our our alien buddy who helps me out on the code base here. Um, this infinite number of him. I love that. I love that effect. That's all in real time. That's being calculated in real time. So, and also we'll give you some electric health. Okay. So that's um, what we were doing our delays, weren't we? Uh, delay in sample. So let's sort those out so this is the left delay in samples and the right delay in samples there we go so now we can play with those down here so our, our left Delay in samples is going to equal, um, so it's very similar to the code that's down here. So the get sample rate multiplied by our left LFO mapped. Which is equivalent to our delays, because remember the smooth delay was what the user, user selected. We're no longer allowing the users to select the delay it's been automated and the right version of that okay so we'll need to do interpolation all that kind of stuff as well um
Okay. So now we can say that um, now we can say that we've got now we've got two read heads, haven't we? So we can now we can figure out what our read heads are going to be. So our left read head is going to be the right head minus the left lane samples, and the right read head is going to be the right head minus the right lane samples. So at the moment they're going to be the same, but so we, we're going to have the opportunity to change that. Okay, so in terms of interpolation, we can probably um, oh, then we can bring this back in, can't we? So now we can um, so we, we defined our this is all defining where we're going to read from, but we need to actually write some data. We write our data in to our circular buffer uh, at the right head, and the right head is the same left for left and right channels. So let's put a comment right sample to delay buffers. Calculate read heads for left and right channels. Okay, so calculate. So what all this really above setting up this this LFO and um, this mapping here, all that's really done is enable us to create the left head read head and the right read head, so that when we read the samples back out the delay buffer, we're reading um, according to the um, to the uh, the algorithm we, we, that we work into. Okay. Um. So if we then say that we're not going to do the interpolation initially, it probably sound horrible, but we'll give it a go. Um. What's the next thing we do? Okay, so we've we've done that bit basically. That's and we've done this bit. Okay, so we need to work. We need to do this with our um, our buffers, our read heads. So what we're going to need to do is make sure they wrap because it's a circular buffer. So we're going to say left read head is less than zero. The left read head is going to be equal. It's going to wrap around, and we want to do the same um, here. So if we, when we come to use our um, proper circular buffer class, all this will be kind of built into the class. Okay, so that takes care of wrapping our read heads around. Um, okay. Um, let's comment these lines out. Uh, but take them up the top there. So in order to try and get some results out of this and leave some work to do the next stream, which will do the interpolation, let's um, let's figure this out.
so a left is a sample is going to be equal to um, it's going to be equal to the um, left delay buffer and we want to uh, use the left read head the left read head to get that sample out and once again the right delayed sample what's that need to float that and similarly and that's going to be the right delay buffer and the right read head okay then we set our feedback when we advance our right head and we multiply by the wet dry ratio and then we alter our alter our samples accordingly okay Let's build that. We've done quite a lot of coding without building or testing. Calvin, welcome. Good to see you in the stream. Let's give you an electric ALF to welcome you to the stream. Thank you very much for the um, YouTube follow, by the way. That was very, uh, very kind of you. Uh, so what have we got here? OK, I think it's because we're using that Pi. Let's get rid of this include. And then we should have an error down in where we're using pi. And um, we'll just do um, 3.14159 in there for now and then work out. I'll work out how to get the, the, the constant of pi. Okay. So let's build that and see if that fixes that incorrect use of a C++ source file. Okay. Okay, it's built this time. Um, let's let's run it up. It's still noted as being a delay, but now it's actually not a delay. It's a chorus. So let's open a file once again like this within and play that. <laughs> so this is having no effect. So here's our rate. So that's the chorus effect. Silly Dev, good evening. So we're, we're, we're about to finish. The phase offset, we're not wired up yet. So the depth is how how wide our... So I, I'm sure you can hear those weird and wonderful effects that are going on there. Yeah, so we're about to finish Silly Dev. Um, I was actually on annual, I'm on an annual leave, and so um, I need to finish. I was given a two-hour slot, and just coming up to two hours. Let's put some feedback in there. Can you hear those weird, weird wonderful effects? <laughs> I was saying, um, I was saying uh, earlier that um, I'm I'm on an annual leave, really. So actually, broadcasting it towards a bonus form. I've, got, I've been given a two-hour slot to to broadcast in. So no, no, and those drones are really. Uh, Mark Miller's stream is fantastic, isn't it? So the drones are wonderful. So um, is he still streaming, uh, Surly? If he is, I'll raid him. There we go. Then, so we have a weird and wonderful chorus effect. 
so it's not quite right we need to do the uh, the linear interpolation on there and we'll do it next time and we should be able to get the flanger working as well and then we'll try and combine it so we have a multi-effect um, plug-in so we can do delay um, different types of delay even um, and we're going to um, have a kind of a delay chorus and flanger effect in one yes sir so it's, it's, it is quite an interesting um, interesting kind of uh, architecture and the way you can plug these together is, is really cool and you get I've got MIDI keyboard you can put MIDI keyboards in all kinds of things okay then so that's that's it that's where I wanted to get to so um, we've got our low frequency oscillator working we've got our chorus effect uh, even though it's very very strange chorus effect um, we can get some different different kind of features to that by making it much more complicated which we may well do so let's um, let's just commit that so working chorus I'm not going to push this to GitHub because we still need to do the because uh, this is on our feature branch and we still need to do the bit where we merge them together um, for um, for our multi-effect plugin so so you're very welcome um, I'm learning about juice um, hopefully you can pick a few things up from these um, these streams it's a huge framework there's lots and lots of stuff in there and some of it is is for me uh, as a beginner with C++ is less than obvious uh, but slowly starting to get through this. this stream is the smoothest stream we've had on working on C++ and, and juice so I'm grateful that it's starting to kind of click in my mind and we're actually getting somewhere with this um, and it's you know, I'm able to use my skills, my C C sharp skills, uh, C sharp skills, uh, and transfer them across. Which is the whole point of this this kind of little mini series, actually, is to show that you can um, you can tackle these these big differences in programming languages and, and in frameworks um, with your existing knowledge. And, and, and that transfer of skills is what I wanted to demonstrate on on screen. But in, in, in reality, really, it's not. Um, it's not uh, something kind of made up about this. This is generally me learning everything as we as we go along. Yes, it's .NET is my uh, my my professional language. It has been for um, how many years now? Must be 15 years plus. I've been using .NET languages um, or, or or Microsoft based languages anyway. Um, so at work, it's uh, it's .NET framework with a bit of um, .NET Core. On stream, it tends to be all .NET Core C Sharp stuff, apart from this kind of departure we're having now. Okay, then, so let's uh, we've we've committed that to my local feature branch, and we'll continue to work on that next time. Let's go over to um, Twitch and see if there's someone available to raid. Uh, right, who can we raid? Instafluff. Illuminated space. I've never raided illuminated space. So we do we try illuminated space? Anyone up for that? Looks like they're still no, oh, they're hosting me. Okay, that's not much good, is it? That's me there. Um, so who's on? Mark's winding up. We have to be Instafluff, I think. So we'll go and raid Instafluff. He's a fun channel. This has got plenty of viewers, so uh, do stay do stay with us to um, join the raid on Instafluff. Uh, otherwise, I shall see you. Um, I shall see you. Uh, well, I'm not sure exactly, but it'll be um, it'll be on Twitter or and on Discord when when my next uh, next stream is going to be. As I say, I'm on on leave at the moment, so it's all a bit up in the air, and the schedules are not necessarily going to be adhered to for the next couple of weeks. So. Um, thank you for joining me and sticking with me and I'll see you next time. Watch Twitter and Discord for updates on the next stream and enjoy your raid to Instafluff.